Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with bilateral grade one keratosis obturans. And for anyone who's new to the channel and hasn't heard of the, uh, the condition keratosis obturans, feel free to visit my YouTube channel. And I have a playlist uh, just solely dedicated on keratosis obturans, but I will uh, explain what it is during the course of this video. So at first appearance, it may look like this patient has got earwax, but this is actually uh, a dead skin plug. So earwax is actually made up of dead skin cells, but it also contains sebum, so an oily lipid secretion also found in our scalp, and um, cerumen, which is an oily sweat. We also find it under our armpits. So earwax is a combination of three ingredients, dead skin, sebum, and cerumen. Whereas um, keratosis obturans is purely a dead skin plug and the ear canal and the outermost layer of the eardrum is lined with a layer of skin we call it the epidermis layer of skin and this skin as it dies and replaces itself the old skin should naturally migrate out of the ear whilst it's shedding until it eventually leaves and vacates the ear but in cases of keratosis obturans this skin this dead skin so keratin fails to migrate out of the ear and in cell, instead it forms into a plug just like this. Um, and you get four different grading systems of keratosis obturans. Now all four grades, in order for someone to be diagnosed with a keratosis obturans, the primary symptom is ear pain. And the reason for that is with a keratosis obturans, the dead skin plug, it gets bigger and bigger to the point where it starts to compress against the bony part of the ear canal, against the walls. And there's so much pressure applied by the dead skin plug that it starts to um, remodel the ear. It creates a widening and expansion of the ear canal. Um, and that's where the pain occurs. So grade one is when a patient attends with um, keratosis obturans and ear pain, but there's just a very uh, mild expansion of the ear canal. A grade two is when there's more of an obvious expansion of the ear canal. And of course, the patient's got uh, ear pain again, and um, they will be really complaining about the hearing. A grade three is when there's moderate expansion of the ear canal, and there's also some granulation tissue present, so some inflammatory um, tissue. Um, we call it granulation tissue. It's kind of, uh, it has a red, moist, bumpy appearance. Uh, it's made up of connective tissue and it has its own blood supply. So quite often when you're removing a grade three keratosis obturans, you experience some bleeding because you're also removing some of this granulation tissue, which will rupture the blood vessels and capillaries um, uh, within the, the granulation tissue. So you do, ex we call it contact bleeding. And then a grade four is an extremely severe form of keratosis obturans where this dead skin plug has grown so much and widened the ear canal so so far where the ear canal itself merges with the mastoid bone which is the bone behind the ear canal so we call that an automastoidectomy uh, and typically they they need surgery otherwise um, with keratosis obturans the main treatment is actually just um, regular cleaning of the ear canal. In some cases, ENT may um, perform a myotoplasty or canaloplasty to remodel the ear um, to, to hopefully try and help dead skin to migrate in a more efficient manner. Um, but yeah, typically it is a case of just um, managing the condition. So this patient last attended four years ago and they were supposed to come every year, but um, Obviously, life gets the better of us sometimes, and the patient didn't experience any symptoms up until recently. And of course, we've had a pandemic in between. So, um, and I've advised the patient to just, okay, it's been four years. So I don't think they need to come every year after, because now that I've seen them a second time, I think if they revisit in 18 months or two years, that would be a good time to remove this dead skin, because it was slightly uncomfortable for the patient today. And that's because this dead skin plug was so coarse and rough around the edges it's almost like sandpaper and because the ear canal has widened in the, in the in the bony part so the more medial aspect of the ear canal the plug was greater in size and diameter than the entrance of the ear so we're really having to pull this through and the patient could feel the friction against the canal wall 
made by the Dead Skin Plug. Um, I have also recommended that they use some sodium bicarbonate drops on a fortnightly basis. The sodium bicarbonate drops works very well with dead keratin uh, in comparison to olive oil. Otherwise, if it's a traditional earwax, I always recommend uh, olive oil spray. But in cases of sodium bicar um, cases of keratosis obtrans, I recommend sodium bicarbonate drops because it helps to to soften the skin a bit better and break down the skin. It doesn't dissolve it, but it helps to break it down a little bit more. So this is uh, the patient's writer. This um, thankfully came out with relatively relative ease. So you can see the skin. They had been using some sodium bicarbonate for a couple of days prior to attending. But here, I'm going to latch on to some of this dead skin. You can see that I'm suctioning here with the forceps. And um, fortunately, the puller came out in uh, one segment. And then there was some crusted dead skin. You'll see that in a moment that I peeled away. So keratosis obtrans, in my experience, it's more common um, in patients between the age of 20 and 40. It's not to say that older or younger patients can't have the condition, but I generally see it in that age bracket. And the exact cause is not fully understood, but it can just be a higher than normal turnover of dead skin and the ear is unable to expel old skin at a quicker rate than the ear is able to produce new skin so you, you get a, a general build-up. Um, another potential reason could be that um, as the skin dies and sheds it should move sideways uh, against the canal wall out of the ear but in cases of keratosis obtrans the skin begins to migrate inwards and also as the skin dies and migrates it should separate near the entrance into little skin flakes, so individual skin cells. But in cases of keratosis obtrans, um, the individual skin cells are typically still interconnected. So you get a sheath, you get a, a thick layer of dead skin as opposed to the individual dead skin cells flaking away. Um, so Sometimes it can be triggered by patients if they are poking inside the ears and they cause some trauma, some microabrasion, because that part of the ear canal can become inflamed um, and inflammation can cause a high and normal turnover of dead skin, which can then sometimes lead to uh, a plug of dead skin forming. You can see this canal, it's very bumpy as well. Um, so the terrain here is quite hilly, which can also make it a bit more difficult for the dead skin to migrate, just continuously up and down. Now, I don't know whether this hilly terrain is as a result of the patient having keratosis of trans or whether indeed they were, uh, this is anatomically uh, um, normal for this patient, they were born with this form of shape and design of ear canal, which has then led to a keratosis of trans. So it's almost like a chicken and egg scenario. We're not sure the cause and effect, but in both ears, the, there is some expansion of the bony canal wall so I'll say this is a grade one. That's all the dead skin plugs that are removed from both ears. The plug more center left is from the left ear, the first ear, and um, bottom right, that's from the, the right ear, the second ear. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.